technical analysis can be all kinds of things, this huge gamut of all this stuff. And some of it's arcane and some of it's mumbo jumbo. A lot of it's mumbo jumbo. And these people give technical analysis a bad name. But the way I look at it is performance based. And, and one thing I was explaining to somebody earlier today in the gym, and I was explaining to him, it's it's kind of like I've never ran a fantasy football, but imagine if I did ran a fantasy run a fantasy football team, I would pick the best players as opposed to picking the shittiest players. And the same thing goes for stocks and crypto and any other market. So along the lines of performance-based technical analysis, as long as the market is at or near new highs, you can't have a, mar a bear market. So you can't have a bear market when the market is making new highs. Now, if you take a look at the TFM 10% system zones, and if you look at the parameters over here, the screen is 100% of the 50 week closing high. So you can see we just closed at a brand new closing high. This next line down is 95% or 5% away, if you look at it that way, from the 50 week closing high. And that's a bit of a caution zone, as Jeff, one of my clients that's often in here, pointed out. That's an area where you might want to think about getting out of the way, although the last two times the market survived that. And then once you get 10% or more away or 90% of the 50-week closing high, you might want to think about exiting, especially if you get a sell signal by the market closing also below the 50-week simple moving average. Now. No guarantees, obviously, and it is it is a free system, so I'll give you your money back for what you pay for the system. <laughs> this simple little system would have kept you out of every bear market in history. Now, as I've said in prior weeks, I looked at it in more recent times when I, when I first did my analysis, so current, whatever the current market conditions were. I looked at it then and then went back a few years, and then I hopped all the way back to the 20s to see what happened back then. And then obviously the last five years or however, long I've created this system, however long ago, and published it, I have paid attention to it going forward. And as I've mentioned quite a bit, the last signal we had, I bought the Qs at 319.49 and knock on wood, come in, uh, it's worked out pretty, pretty well so far. Now the drawdown is going to be pretty tough if it goes all the way down to that 50 day, 50 week simple moving average. But for now, it looks okay. Now, as I said last week, and somebody misconstrued it as I'm saying there's a bear market or a week before, whenever it was, the point I was making is that once you stop making new highs, it's almost like the countdown begins. Now, in that same presentation, the point I was making was not that we had topped, but to pay attention to what's happening and you have time to get out of a bear market before the bear market begins. It doesn't feel like it sometimes, but if you go back and look at the charts historically, now there's been a few cases where it's only been three or four weeks, but for the most part, I think even in 1987, you had weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks where the market was topping, and then you received a TFM 10% system sell signal. So that's just one way of kind of looking at it is like, okay, if a market's topping out and we're gonna count the sell signal as the official sell signal when the potential bear market has begun. Now, this isn't a great example back here because it was a whipsaw type of signal, but you can see it took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 or 17 weeks before it actually triggered a sell signal. So the point I was making, especially if you go back and look at 2000, 2007, 1987, there was a few times in the 90s, off the top of my head, I can't think about exactly when, but there was some pretty ugly spills in the 90s. And then obviously the 70s were just absolutely abysmal. I wasn't actually trading in the 70s, but I've done a lot of research going through the 70s. And as Bruce Frazier pointed out, even in the 70s, although everybody talks about how horrible and choppy the markets were, there was a pretty good trends back then. But before I digress too far, a simple little system, some sort of performance-based technique, something to get you out of trouble can work really, really well.